I think what I really, really loved about Amy was she wasn't like your typical pop star. Hey guys, it's me, Ella Henderson, and I'm obsessed with Amy Winehouse. My very first memory of ever seeing and hearing Amy Winehouse, um, I was sat on the sofa at home with my mum and we were watching the Jules Holland show. And I can remember she was singing um, some songs off the Frank album. And um, I'm sure it was, uh, I think it was F Me Pumps. She, she was singing in Stronger Than Me. And I just remember being mesmerized by everything about her, just like, her tone in her voice, the way she would phrase her words, like, um, and the fact that she had came from this, like, grew up listening to all this jazz music. Like, I just related to it so much. And I can remember, um, I was like, please record it, record it. And I can remember, I must have sat and rewound it and watched her, like, at least 10 times um, back. And I just fell in love with her from that moment. And then anything she did, and when I found out she was then coming with a new album um, after that in the Back to Black album, like, I just was like, so, so excited to like hear what she was gonna come with next. Um, so yeah, that was the first time I ever heard her. And like, yeah, I guess. And, and also she's my mum's favorite artist, apart from Bob Marley. <laughs> um, I'd say like me and my mum share the bond of Amy Winehouse. Oh gosh, I have so many favorite songs of hers. Um, I mean, the whole Back to Black album in itself for me is just like, if I was on a desert island and I could only listen to one album for the rest of my life, it would be that album. Um, I just feel like you've got a mixture of everything there. And I love how sonically it's got like hints to Motown, it's got the jazz and oh, just, it's so soulful and so warm and it makes me feel really nostalgic. And I feel like she did this thing as well where Amy had this thing with, like everything felt so timeless and classic, but it was also just so refreshing, wasn't it? Like, I feel like she was just really, really modern, but with this big throwback. Um, but I'd say my favorite song would be, I mean, Rehab was a banger. I, I love Rehab. I think Rehab was like really, really catchy. But for me, um, Tears Dry On Their Own was like one of my absolute favorite songs, just the production around it felt like, um, I don't know, for me, it reminded me of um, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, like the production on it. Um, and I was just obsessed with it. And also known that like Mark Ronson was involved with her album, like he was one of my favorite producers at the time. So I think just the whole thing, um, sonically was amazing. I also really, really loved her, um, her ballad on the album as well. Why has the title just gone out of my head? Um, Love is a losing game. Love is a losing game has to be like the one song that I would go to to listen to whenever I'm just feeling melancholy and I'm looking out a rainy window <laughs> um, and I want to have a little moment to myself like and also her lyrics in that song for me um, they're just so poignant and uh, like so picturesque and she makes you visualize everything through her songs so love is a losing game and tears are on their own are my two favorites I think my favorite video of hers is is rehab um, just because she's it's so simple but it was the first time we ever saw Amy with the big kind of like the hair and everything and, and, and her tattoos out on her arm. And I just feel like for me, that's like, if I'm ever gonna think of like the first time I looked at her and thought, wow, she's a superstar now, was in that video. Um, and it was really simple. And she's just kind of sat on the bed and the guys playing um, like the brass instruments around her in the room. And I don't know, it's just effortless, but really, really cool. Yeah, I would definitely say that album was, you know, one of the biggest things was I can remember I used to look at all the song credits and whoever she was in a room with and who she produced them with, like <clears throat> they went straight on a list of people I wanted to write with. Um, and I was even able to write with Salam Remy, who did a lot of the Back to Black album with her. And he did a song with me on my first album. And I was just in awe. Um, and I do think there was, I think it's her honesty that completely translates with me and I relate to. So I think with me, what I've always kind of carried anyway, but like because of an artist like her to show that you can be so honest and truthful and it can be relatable and you don't need to hide behind any false pretenses. There's no filter with her. It's quite raw around the edges. It's gritty and... I think what I really, really loved about Amy was she wasn't like your typical pop star and she didn't fit this perfect pocket. And for me, that's what I loved about her. Cause I was like, oh, okay. Like she really is a stance for like something fresh that's not happening right now. She's given a nod to the past of like her sonic references, but 
she still makes it sound like you know timeless and like it's 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 new right now i don't think there's anyone <laughs> um as interesting and as funny to watch in an interview as amy winehouse um she's just literally she is what it is on the tin um and i think i love her i loved her for that i think there's no um there's just no filter with her is there and like there's no i don't know if i can swear but there's no bullshit. like she just she just is is her and i love how blunt she was in interviews as well you know it, I often in this job you get asked the most ridiculous questions and if she was asked it you, you almost kind of like you almost want to ask that question to her to see what reaction she's going to give but um i think that's why i love her as well and she always stuck to her guns and she never ever let anybody change her opinion or her view and i love that nobody molded her she literally said this is me this is who i am like it or lump it um, I think that's kind of what I love about her, especially she's a female. If I'd have met Amy in real life, I would have said, first of all, I'd have been like, can we just get on an, like an open mic night and just sit and sing together and sing all the jazz songs, like let's sing Billie Holiday, Ella Fitzgerald. Um, and I don't know, I just want to get into her head lyrically. I would, I would want to, I'd just, I'd want to just write songs with her and just get to know her. And I feel like there was this soft side and vulnerable side to Amy that you can hear through some of her songs and through her more vulnerable records. Um, and anyone that I know that did meet her and knew her, apparently she was like the most kindest and generous person. So I don't know, just, just getting to know her for what she is, for the real her would have, would have been amazing.